Design family, stay tuned for our previously recorded message. May this recording be a blessing. Fair family, here's this week's announcement. Design family, don't forget, we have Sunday school starting at 10:30 a.m. in the fellowship hall. Don't miss out on the EFBC Missionary Christmas Tree Raffle. The drawing will be December 12th after the 11:30 service. For tickets and more information, visit the missionary table in the foyer. Church family, because of your heart to give our student scholars were able to donate 55 blessing bags to Sojourners Homeless Shelter in Wilmington, Delaware. They are learning the value of service to the community 
and could not have accomplished this without you. With sincere gratitude, the Scholarship Ministry. EFBC, this is Pastor Curry. We are sponsoring for the first time ever in collaboration with the Blood Bank of Delaware, our first community blood drive. It will be held in January of 2022. We need 100 partners to partner with me in donating blood. In order to make this possible, I ask that you would sign up in the lobby today as we will be able to present the names to the Blood Bank of Delaware in order to schedule the specific date for our blood drive. Again, this is Pastor Curry. I'm asking that you would join me in giving the gift of life to somebody else who is in need. Remember my famous quote, we have to bless others who cannot bless us back. God bless. Transportation ministry is back. If you are fully vaccinated, do not have a vehicle of your own, Call the church at 302-652-9114. Again, that's 302-652-9114. Our Deacon of the Week is Deacon Berman Jones. If you need assistance, please call 302-652-9114. Whatever you're going through, God will not only bring you through it, but he will make you even stronger. This is Pastor Curry. Normally, I come in at the end of the message in order to share with you how the Lord blessed us in a very, very tremendous way. But today we're doing something special. As a church, we decided we want to really put the emphasis of Christ in Christmas. So all of the ministers here at Ease I Am Fair have decided we've come together. We're going to bring to you each week a different aspect of the Christmas story. First, it starts with an announcement. After the announcement, it goes to the angels conversations, then the arrival of Jesus Christ and the after effects. We're going to really give it to you. So today you're going to get four of our ministers. They're going to bring you the word of God. And I want you to enjoy this. First, you're going to have Reverend Cephas. Then you're going to have Reverend Cleckley. I'm going to come back and sermon, do a little sermonette too. And then you're going to have a little bit from Reverend Edwards and Minister Claire. And I'll close it out. I'll be back to see you in just a few more minutes. God bless. The title is There is Hope. We are coming from out of the book of Isaiah. So tell me, who was Isaiah? Well, it says he was considered the greatest Old Testament prophet. He was married, had two sons. He had powerful messages, both judgment and hope. He was in touch with God. He also was a prophet that God sent to predict the birth of Christ. The name Isaiah in itself means salvation of the Lord. Now in Isaiah 7, 13 and 14, we find that it was a lot of things going on. We have Ahab, who was king of Judah. We have Rents, who was king of Syria. And we have Pelah who was king of Israel. Now these two kings were working together and threatened to invade Judah if King Ahab did not agree to join an anti-Assyrian coalition. But Ahab adamantly refused. Now these were dark days for Judah. But now, let's see. Now, who now, who in here knows when you're going through hard times and you don't know which way to turn, don't know where to go, you're not alone. For God sees everything and he knows what you're going through. We don't have to worry about a thing. We must trust in him. And it brought me to a song, as I was writing this, it brought me to a song that the men sing. And it says here, he's, he's our, uh, God is everything. He's our joy and sorrow. He's our hope of tomorrow. But I said this, he's not just our hope of tomorrow. He's our hope of today. 
Also, I said, he's a rock in a weary land, shelter in a time of a storm. God is, God is our everything. So if you look back over your life and you see that whatever you were going through, God brought you through it. You weren't alone. All we got to do is depend on him and trust in him and he'll make a way for us. So God told Isaiah to meet with King Ahab to let him know that he need not be afraid for God will destroy his enemies. Now when God has something for us to do, he will equip you. He won't, he won't let you be alone for God is with you every step of the way. What it says, don't be afraid. All we got to do, look, pray, trust in God till he'll work things out for us. Pray that he will go before us, go with us. He'll work it out. All we got to do is trust in the Lord. Verse uh, 10 and 12. It said, the Lord spoke again unto Ahab and asked of a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask anything in other words, in the living translation it says, make it as difficult as you want or as high as the heavens or as deep as the place of the dead. Now from the message Bible it says, be extravagant. Ask for the moon. So God was saying, I will prove it to you. Just trust me. And that's the same thing he does with us. Trust him. Sure, we go through hard times and tribulations, but trust in God. He did it before and he'll do it again. So just keep our trust in God. But Ahab said, I'll never do that. I'll never make demands like that on God. Well, in fact, God was the one who told him. God, it says, Ahab showed disbelief. And we do that too. It's not just back in the biblical days, but we look at life today. And we sometimes are disbelieving in what God tells us. Keep reading. God will show you that he'll show up when you least expect it. He is right there by your side. I dream it of a white Christmas. Just like the one do, do, you know There's a tree top glistening ah, And ah, children ah, just sing To hear sleigh bells in the snow Come on, son ba -na 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 -na. of a white do, do, Christmas do, do, do. Just like the one I used to know. May the tree top glistening and children can sing to hear sleigh bell in the snow. Come on, come on. My dreaming of a white Christmas. With every letter I wrote May your day, may your day, may your day Be bright May Christmas.
chapter 9, the prophet Isaiah gives us a clear, more specific glimpse of the attributes and character of this hope, the coming Messiah. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. Who is the government? The government is we, us. We are the government. The Constitution starts with we the people. If God be for us, who can be against us? And he goes on to say some of the names of. He will be called Wonderful Counselor. I, I know uh, Statistics say that, that this is the most depressing time of the year. But, but for me, it's the most wonderful time <laughs> of the year. Yes, because we have a wonderful counselor. Yeah, we don't have to go to the therapist. We have a wonderful counselor that knows exactly what we're going through. Yes, we also understand that the world has put on us some burdens that we can take to the Lord and leave them there. Yes, he also states that God is the mighty God. Yes, the, the mighty God. I heard him call him later rabbi or, or teacher. But he's the mighty God. He's not a statue or a little G God. But he's the God that's strong in power. The God of dunamis. I, I know you like that, uh, Dr. Hines. He's bigger than any problem, situation, or circumstance I could ever face. Yes, he's the mighty God. Then he goes on to say he's the everlasting Father. See, the, the sign we see that says, John 3.16 says, that whosoever believeth in him will have everlasting life. So this is the everlasting father. His kingdom will have no end. He will reign forever. He is the alpha and the omega. The beginning and the end. For you see, God is time. And with them, there is no. I woke up this morning with my mind. Yes, Lord, I woke up this morning with my mind. Hallelujah. I woke up this morning with my mind.
when you look around during that time, that dispensation when the world was all messed up, there was so much going on, problem after problem, issue after issue, kings coming together to go against another king. And then all of a sudden, you found out even in the camp, there were people who were supposed to be living for God, but were not. There was so much happening and God has said, it's time for me now to take that John text, John 1 and 1. And it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh. That's around the 14th verse. And all of this comes into reaction because of what happened. What happened was God was sick and tired of being separated from his people. So what God decided to do was, I'm going to send a prophet and I'm going to let the prophet know in the midst of all kind of chaos and all kind of confusion that's going going on in the world that we are living in that I'm getting ready to do what I promised I can do I'm sitting up in heaven but don't forget I'm three people only been able to use one of three so far you've only seen God who created everything but there's a God the son too who's going to be able to bring people back and then there's a God the Holy Spirit that's going to be able to make sure we have sustaining power so since he was sitting up there by himself can I use my sanctified imagination real quickly because he was sitting there by himself saying you know what it's time for me now to get in some flesh. I told the folks on the broadcast for this week, I said, God dignified dirt so that he can save you and I. Because you didn't know this, but I want to make sure you know that we were made out of the dirt and he had to come through the same process that he prepared for us. He calls together, he says to Isaiah in Isaiah 7, 14, he says, now this is what I want you to do. I want you to make it very clear that unto him will, will be given a sign and a virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. In the midst of all kind of hurt, in the midst of all kind of distance, you're getting ready to get a savior who will be called Emmanuel. It blew my mind when I found out what Emmanuel really meant because when I realized it is that Emmanuel means God with us, which means the God up in heaven is now about to come to earth. See, you've been looking at the problems, you've been looking at the situation you've been looking at the hurt you've been looking at the pain but we don't live by sight we live by faith but because there are people who don't know how to live by faith it's time for me to wrap myself up in flesh and come to this world and save a world that's on doom and destruction listen to what he does he says therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign a sign it's not going to be a spiritual sign it's going to be a tangible sign you're going to have a, a virgin who's going to consider and give birth to a son and that son shall be called Emmanuel. How he did it this was very interesting because he did some things I want to give to you real quickly. Three little things. He would be out of the house of David. If you read the text a little bit earlier, he's going to come from a house of a king that was messed up, tied up and tangled up. Anybody know anything about David? You know for sure that David was not a perfect man which means for those of us who didn't come from perfect families, don't worry about it. Jesus didn't either. Can I get a witness? I can't even wait to get to the 11 o'clock because that's when you're going to learn his heritage. When you will be able to see that he came from some messed up people. For those of you trying to hide your family, stop trying to hide them. Jesus came from a messed up crew too. But it did not stop him from doing what God had called him to do. He would come out of the house of David. King David was the first king in Jer um, Jerusalem. The first group of people who decided they're going to honor and worship God. It was later reported that it was King David's um, era where the people of God prospered and followed the things of God. But I just want to make sure you understand, David was a messed up man. He was a tore up, tore up man. But you know what God did? He named him a man after his own heart. Because when you have a repenting spirit, when you have a spirit where you can tell the Lord, I messed up. I made a mistake. God can still use you. He made it very clear in the 13th verse that this child is going to come out of the house of David but wait a minute he's going to be born of a virgin well for those of you women who've been torn down and talked about and made to be feel ashamed and by these bigoted men trying to look like y'all don't have any value listen Jesus didn't have to come through a woman but God wanted to validate the women to let the women know that I'm going to bring my child through you because one thing I believe if I can use my own sanctity 
sanctified imagination. I believe that God knew I better not let a man try to bring him up in here because abortion will be at a all time high. But I chose a woman who know how to live by faith. I chose a woman who know how to trust God. I chose a woman who know how to make a way out of no way. But wait a minute. It was one last thing in that little area of the text. It says and you shall call him Emmanuel. He will be personal and intimate. For those of you who see the distant deity it's time to make it personal. He's not the God who sits up in heaven. He's the God who's right with you. And when Isaiah gives this testimony he says what you see today you won't see no more. God won't be sitting on a throne but he'll be among us. And then he jumped down to Isaiah 9 and 6 and he shares the character of our Messiah. See our Messiah can't just be a normal guy. He got to have character. Somebody say character. Listen to what the text says. For unto us is born. To us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulders and we will, he will be called wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father and prince of peace. He will carry the weight of the world on his shoulders. I like the way brother Cleckley brought it there and I want to make it very clear. We the people were messed up. We had sin after sin but it would be Jesus who would carry all of our sin, all of our shame. Do I have a witness in here? Wonderful counselor, one who leads and guides us into all truth. If you are confused, you need a little bit more Jesus. If you don't know what to do, you need a little bit more Jesus because he's wonderful counselor. I know you've listened to people, but God is saying, stop listening to people and get your wonderful counselor. Do I have a witness in here? Oh, I like this one. He shall be our mighty God. He shall be our mighty God. The God above every God in this world. Your money means nothing. Your prestige means nothing. The God I serve is the mighty God, which means if I'm sick, he'll heal me. If I'm depressed, he'll bless me. Do I have a witness in here? And he's the everlasting father. We've had these little gods. We've had these little fathers. We've had these little people in our lives. But who's about to come? And by the way, he's already come. But who's about to come? He's going to be everlasting. Everlasting and everlasting. There is no end to his kingdom. And I love the last one. He shall be the prince of peace. Sir, Sir, Sir Salom, which simply means prince of peace, which simply means I'll give you peace that will surpass all understanding. It simply means that I'll give you peace when you're crying. I'll give you peace when you're lonely. I'll give you peace when you don't know which way to go. He shall be our peace. And I wonder today, is there anybody here ever tried him for your peace? Do I have a witness? And in this day that we're living in, for the record, he's coming back again. Yes, over 3,000 years ago, he made this proclamation and he delivered. He showed up. Do I have a witness? He showed up. But for this message, I need to tell somebody today that in the midst of everything that's going on, God is saying, I'm going to show up again. And when I show up the next time, it won't be about salvation, but it'll be about judgment and damnation. So get right, church. Get right, church. Get right, church. Mm. And then, and then, there's a scripture that talks about let the wheat and the tear grow together. Something happened when I was preparing last night. Tears are weeds that resemble wheat. 
tears are weeds that resemble wheat. But when Jesus returned this time, the first time, it was to save humanity. Anybody witness he came the first time? But the next time, everything that looked like a Christian may not be a Christian. Reverend Wilson, for years, I... The weed and the tear grow together at harvest time. I'll do the separating. What are you talking about, God? He said, because so many people look like who they are not. But God says, when my son came the first time, it was to get the weeds to become wheat. But if Amen. The gospel according to Luke chapter 1. Verses 30 to 34. And it reads. But the angel of the Lord said to her. Do not be afraid Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. And you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. Now, there are several instances when we find ourselves putting our names into the job hat market hat, looking for a position that we know we are qualified for only to be rejected. There are also times when, when your less than perfect credit must be put under the, app, the loan application microscope and given the green light to press forward toward the pregnant possibilities of the American dream. But what, but what if you are faced with an opportunity to do something that you have absolutely no idea how it can and will occur. Audrey Hepburn once said, nothing is impossible. The word itself says, I'm possible. And this is where we find Mary, the mother of Jesus, as she is being told by the angel Gabriel that she will conceive a child at her young age and in her inexperienced betrothed state. She is visited by the angel who delivers this impossible news after Mary's seasoned and barren cousin not only conceived, but was carrying the forerunner to Jesus, the promised Messiah. How can this be that a woman of Elizabeth's years and Mary, a young virgin, was now able to conceive? This passage of scripture il illuminates for us many simple truths. But for your hearing, I would like to posit that Mary learned. And we need to understand that one, favor ain't fair. Two, to not doubt the power and pregnant possibilities of God. And three, qualification or experience is not required in this season of your life. Verse 30 opens with the angel telling Mary that she is favored of the Lord. Mary at this moment is already apprehensive about this stranger approaching her. I am sure she was like us when told by God that we are pregnant with promise, a bit taken aback that she would even be considered for such a task. Mary was proof that God's favor was not predicated on age, experience, social status, or money. She was a testimony that sometimes favor just isn't fair and that God can choose who he wants to do, what he wants, when he wants. And at that moment, it was Mary, but at this moment, it is you. How can this be? I am not perfect, but God is not looking for perfection. He's looking for the willing. This quote is a quote that's, that, 
There is a quote that states that God qualifies the unqualified. Mary was not qualified to be pregnant. How could it be? Mary was a virgin. Mary was young and without a husband. So how can it be? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5, not that we are fit, qualified, and sufficient in ability of ourselves to form personal judgment or to claim or count anything as coming to us, but our power and ability and sufficiency are from God. You are not college educated. You do not drive the fanciest car. Your vocabulary may be limited. How can it be you were selected for that promotion? You were approved for that mortgage. You are pregnant after years of trying. How can it be you are favored and favored just ain't fair. In verse 34, Mary questions that angel by asking a question that I'm sure we all would ask in this situation. How will this be since I am a virgin? Mary's question seems valid given the fact that she was a virgin and scientifically and physically speaking, there was no egg and sperm fertilization. So what the angel Gabriel was telling her was humanly impossible. But my sisters and brothers, when God is in it, there are no limits. And God chose to impregnate Mary with Jesus, the promised Messiah. God chose to impregnate her with the Savior of the world. God chose to impregnate her with the Son of the Most High God. God chose to impregnate her with the Holy One whose kingdom will never end. God chose to impregnate Mary with Jesus, the one who will heal the sick and raise the dead. God chose her to impregnate her with Jesus, a mind regulator and a world changer. God chose to impregnate Mary with Jesus, a heavy load carrier and the ultimate physician. He impregnated her with Jesus, Emmanuel. He impregnated with her with Jesus, the wonderful counselor. He impregnated her with Jesus, the mighty God. He impregnated her with Jesus, the everlasting father. He impregnated her with Jesus, the prince of peace. He impregnated her with Jesus, the lover of my soul. He impregnated her with Jesus, a friend to the end. He impregnated her with Jesus. A promise of salvation to you and me. So like Mary, you are pregnant with promise and possibility. Like Mary, you are pregnant with, with, pregnant with promise and possibility. You are pregnant with an idea that will change lives. You are pregnant with a vision that will transform communities. You are pregnant with a ministry that will impact nations. You are pregnant with a ministry that will impact nations. And out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. You may ask, how will this be? I'm out of my element. How will this be? I don't feel ready. Yeah, I said that. How can this be? This defies all logic. How can this be? This seems impossible. How can this be? This don't feel right. How can this be? I'm not qualified. But don't worry about your abilities. Don't worry about the lack thereof. For the Bible says in John chapter 14 verse 12, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me would do the works I have been doing and they will do greater works than these. So greetings, you highly favored people of God. Let me announce to you today that the Lord is with you. Emmanuel, he is here. And in this Advent season, this season where we celebrate the miracle of the birth of Jesus, understand that you don't have to be experienced. Oh, forget about it. You don't have to be experienced. If you don't doubt the power of God and the promises of God, you will surely found out and be pleased that favor just ain't fair. You're my king.
just belief. And as I thought about that, I said Mary had something else besides just belief. And God gave me the answer. He said, you know what faith has got to entail? Let it be to me according to your word. Mary had more than just belief. She had an attitude of agreement. Think about it right there. Let it be to me according to your word. An attitude of agreement. Many of us, when it comes to faith, stick with belief. That's all. That's all. But when God says, look, I'm looking for an attitude of agreement. I can go up to the top of a mountain and know that God, if you told me to take a seat right there, I have an attitude that says, that chair may not hold me up, but I know that you can hold that chair up. Look at that. Guess what? There goes an attitude of agreement. I look at it this way. Again, when it comes to faith, when it comes to Mary, God chose Mary because not only did she have favor, but she had an attitude that says, I am willing to stick with this. I am willing to stay with this. I am willing to go to the cross and still see my son and say, I am here. Mom is still here. Guess what? When it comes to your faith, when it comes to faith, you have got to maintain the key to faith. And that is your attitude. Your attitude plays the major part. I'm being real right there. Two, hey, I'm saying thank you. Fine. Two cannot walk together unless they what? Agree. There goes agreement. You've got to have an agreement. You've got to say, God, not only do I have a belief, but I've got an agreement with you. Understand something about faith. Understand this about faith. Look at Peter. I like that story right there. I said, you know what? He's sitting on a boat. Here comes Jesus on the water. And Peter said, if you are the son of God, command me to come to you. Let me walk on this water. Belief said, I'll get out the boat. Because Jesus said, come. Belief said, hey, come on. Peter said, guess what? Here I come. There goes belief. What happened to Peter? Why did he start to sink? It wasn't because of his belief. It was because of his attitude of agreement. He started to sink because when he started to see the logistics of where he was at, when he started to see that he's supposed to be falling, guess what? That's when he started to say, I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know how this water can hold me up. Guess what? Look at Mary. Mary is saying the same thing right there. I don't know how you're going to do this. I don't know how you're going to bring this. But guess what? I'm at your service. I am your maid servant. Oh, yes. I am at your service. And that is the truth. That is the truth. You've got to be at the service of God in all of your lives. You've got to walk with a belief and you've got to walk with an attitude that says, I agree with you. For God I live and for God I die. There it is. I'm going after you. I'm not stopping here because I love you. And God says, that's why I chose you. Why? Because I know you will stick with me from the bottom to the top, from the beginning to the end. I am with you always. Remember that. Understand that. God is looking for your faith, belief, and an attitude that says, I agree. Let's go.
so good, I mean so good to me. Everybody. I ain't got to do nothing with that. I ain't got to do nothing with it. I I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> Amen. Even on our Coffee with Curry, the question kept coming up, why, why, why? It's an attitude issue. And, and, and God knew that he, she would stick with him. What a gracious. Listen, I'm not, look, at, the, at 9 o'clock I did a little, I tried to call myself doing a little bit or whatever, but I'm going to do one thing. There's another text. I ain't going to exegete it. I'm going to show you some things. I'm going to act like Carlton Pearson. <laughs> and I'm just going to talk to you for two minutes. Could you put on that Matthew 1 text, please, real quick up on the screens? Because a good pastor knows when to chill out. You have that Matthew text. Now I want to show you something real quickly. And I'm going to be very, they've already talked about the conversation the angel had with Mary. It's going to happen. It's going to happen through you. But there's something I want you to know for every person who reared like me, who didn't have all access to everything. Not only did God look at the fact that Mary had the right attitude and she would stick with him and that favor was not going to be fair, but he also was very strategic in the line he brought him through. He could have brought him through a perfect line, a line of a lineage, a lineage where the, the people were perfect and had the right outlook on life. But if you look at this, I'm not going to read all of that. Now go to the next slide just so they can see all the, this is the 42 generations. And as you see different names, you're going to see murderers in there. You're going to see incest in there you're gonna see rape in there you're gonna see crazy stuff in there god why would you tell me through the prophet isaiah that he would come through 42 generations and the generations that you bring him through bunch of mess ups bunch of tie ups you didn't bring him from the perfect line, the suburbs, but you brought him from the hood. What's up with you, God? What's up? God said, I needed to identify. I needed you to know that I can identify with all of you who are trying to hide your family line. For all of you who don't want people to know you came from some crazy folks. God said, it's all right. So did my son come through some. We don't have to ever be ashamed of where we came from. For those of you who are afraid to tell the truth where God has brought you from. You don't understand the power and the might of God. Through 42 generations, Sister Curry, when I was preparing for this little segment. Because I knew they were going to handle the other part. Something happened to me. 42. Somebody say 42. Do you know what that means? In the Hebraic language. 42 means ultimate question of life before Jesus could come life had to be at a bad position it's the ultimate question of life what is the answer to life that's what 42 represents in Hebrew tongue and 42 means the ultimate question being answered what is the answer somebody better say Jesus real quickly he had to come through 42 generations because it was in the 42th ge second generation where he came to save that which was lost. But then something else happened. Something else happened. I said I was going to talk. Something else happened in all those generations. There were 14 sets of three. 
I wish if you look at your Bible, you'll see it. Each generation had 14 sets and it was three different sets. Which tells me 14 times 3 equals 42. It adds back up to the whole notion. So I said, Lord, what are you saying through the 14 in the three different sets? He's saying 14 represents deliverance and salvation. If you know anything, and listen, don't take my word for it. Look it up in the Hebrew. The number 14 represents deliverance. The Savior would come and be our deliverer. This is why I need to make sure you understand that God is strategic. What has happened to you, what is happening to you, what will happen to you have already been thought out by God. You don't need to be afraid. You don't need to be scared. You don't need to shake in your boots because God's got you. He knows what he's doing. When he allowed the angel to go talk to Mary, he knew what Mary's response would be. He also knew what some of my other people's responses will be. We'll get to those in another week. But it's important that you understand 42 is the ultimate answer to the questions of life, Jesus Christ. You also know that 14 represents deliverance and salvation. He is our salvation. God knows what he's doing. But it was one more thing that happened. It was three different sets. Three represents Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But wait a minute, Pastor. I'm done. Wait a minute. When you read the Matthew text, I want you to pay attention to God used a family line that was not perfect. But what I didn't tell y'all is the seven in the 14 linkage. And the seven represents completion and wholeness. Everything God does, he puts an amen on it. Did you hear what I just said? Now, as we look, and I'm done, as we look at the Christmas story, the first part is the prophecy. Know that God knows what he is doing. Know that God knows what he is doing. He will never put us in a spot. Claire said it the best when he showed us the chair. It doesn't look like it can hold up. But if you trust the God who holds the chair, God will always make a way for you. Three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What is the whole method of the first announcement? He's coming. He's coming. It took 700 years between the time of the announcement that he's coming to the Matthew text. But he came. Do you believe me? He came. And when you are celebrating Christmas, I want you to know that the God I serve is a promise keeper. My, 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 my. What a mighty word of the Lord from all of the ministers who did it today. Today we had four of our ministers from Ezion Fair, and they did a phenomenal job with sharing with you all about the, the prophecy. He's to come starting with the Isaiah text and then moving through the Matthew and the Luke text to talk about the various ways in which he would come and the lineage in which he came through. I hope you enjoyed me sharing with you how God is a God of strategic plan. Our ministers here at Ezion Fair did a phenomenal job and I really thank God for each of them. To God be the glory for all of them for the next few weeks. You're going to hear from all of the ministers of Ezion Fair as we're going to do different aspects of the Christmas story. It's wonderful to share in this season not to be a excited about the money that you're going to spend, but be excited about the fact that Jesus Christ was born and he brought salvation to the world. I hope you enjoyed the word of God today. Get ready for next week. It's going to be on. It's going to be wonderful. The Lord is going to bless. Join us today at our 11 a.m., 1130 a.m. service. We have two on Sunday. We have one at nine. We have another one at 1130. Join us live so that you can enjoy the word of God and the people of God. Our praise teams are doing a phenomenal job with bringing us the Christmas music, and we are excited about what Jesus is doing. We have prayer every Sunday. 
Sunday and every uh, Wednesday for, at 5 a.m. I hope you will join us in prayer. You can see the number for the prayer call right here on your screen. But please join us for prayer every Monday, I'm sorry, every Sunday and every Wednesday at 5 a.m. We also have Bible study on Thursday nights, Thursday at 7 o'clock, and then the Word of God is going to come forward after the praise and worship. Again, thank you for the time that we've shared together today, and I hope you enjoyed this broadcast because this is how we're going to do it for the next three weeks until the month of December is over. We're going to share the pulpit. We're going to share the, the view and audience with the people of God, the ministers of Ezion and Fair. It's going to be great. I'm enjoying it. I hope you will too. Merry Christmas to all of you. I'll see you next week. God bless.